Interview and job search strategies at work. All right, so I'm just going to be really quick here. I just want to talk a little bit about uh, being a leader and uh, motivating your employees, right? But guess what? They, you know, you work for them. They don't work for you, right? So, for instance, uh, if you want your people to do stuff, right, you know, you don't send an email saying, hey, um, um, you know, team, I've seen these type of things. Please, you know, do it this way or whatever. That's never going to work. All your employees see is, oh, micromanagement. Or, ah, can you just, you know, let us be? Why do you need to? Because, like, when you when you say things like, if you're a leader, like, I've been doing a, you know, a review. I've been checking things. You know, um... You don't have to do that. All you have to do is say, like, um, um, you know, instead of saying, like, I checked X, Y, Z, say something like, uh, please make sure you're doing X, Y, Z. You know, and then what you do is you give a reason why. You'll say, like, um, you know, our customer um, relies on the factual data or something like this. But when you have, send an email out, just really, you know, if you're a leader... Go through your emails. Go through the ones you've sent out. And look at them and say, like, is my message, am I trying to micromanage them, you know, to tell them exactly what to do? Um, is, you know, also think about this. Is your team in chaos? Is your team, you know, do you need to direct them that much, right? Or, for instance, if they're like, um, um, if you're... It, your team is relying on you to tell you exactly what to do because they don't know. That's going to get really, really cha- uh, um, old real quick. So let's assume you're a micromanager, right? You like you like it done this way or that way, right? So what you're saying to your team is like, okay, um, you have to do it this way. And your team's like, okay, I'll do it that way. And if it fails, guess what? It's your problem. It's not mine. You don't want to do that because after a while, you're the one as leader who has to have like all the stress. Like ah, uh, and then what? What you say? What you're probably thinking is, oh, these people just won't do what I need them to do, or properly. Well, because you're not giving them the freedom. You got to give them the freedom of choice, the freedom of of creativity. Let them do it their way, you know. Until they, you know, let them. Everything is worth doing wrong until you can do it right, you know, basically. Because what happens is when you let them fail, they're gonna have, uh, uh, they're gonna own it. Like, oh yeah, it's it's good. Because now they're like, oh, okay, I, I know what you mean by that. I, I see why you want me to do it this way. And then you leave it at that. Let them be creative on their own way, you know. All you have to do as leader is give them guidelines. This is what I expect, done. You don't have to tell them how, Exactly. They don't. They don't work that way. I mean, people don't work well that way. And you know, if you think that's right, you know, you're wrong. <laughs> Truth be told, um, because guess what? <laughs> Nobody likes to work that way. You know. I mean, no one. People want to be like, let me be creative. You know, let me be. Let me do my own thing. You know, let me figure it out. You tell me what the guidelines are. And I'll stay within those guidelines. Okay, good. Don't don't, don't micromanage them, though. You know, don't say any... Because you're, if you're a leader, your emails are so important. They're very, very important when you send an email. People really... They'll, if, it's, if it's not clear or if you say... Uh, the message is like, okay, uh, you want me to do it this way. Exactly this way? Okay, all right. Yeah, I'll do it exactly that way. And then I won't care. I'm an employee. I won't care. Like, hey, whatever. I don't care. You know, I'm good. Hey, guess what? They want me to do it that way. I'll do it that way. No big deal. I don't care. I'm just here, man. I'm just here collecting a paycheck until I can collect a paycheck somewhere else. That's the mindset of people. When you micromanage somebody, that's exactly what you get. If you're a leader, like I said, go through your emails. 
Look at all your emails. Look at the ones you've sent in the past week, month, whatever. And, you know, analyze them. If you, you know, if you're a worry wart, probably you are if you're a micromanager. Uh, you're a control freak, probably, if you're a micromanager. Ask yourself, like, what am I... You know, if if I don't do X, Y, Z, you know, maybe for a week or for a couple days, don't do anything. Like, don't be that person anymore. Don't send those emails out. You know, just let it happen. You know, and you're, you're going to find what's going to happen. You know, of course, it's like, um, maybe it's your... Maybe it's your manager, your manager above you, um, that is doing that for you. Basically, your maybe your manager is like, "Hey, you need to do it this way," and you're like, "Okay, I need to do it this way." Or they're putting pressure on you. Guess what? Just push back on your manager, you know, or just quit, go somewhere else. If your manager that you, so you're the manager. I, I won't say leader. I know I said leader earlier, but if you're micromanaging, you're a manager. You're not a leader, plain and simple. Um, but if your manager is managing you that way, have a conversation with him or her and say, uh, listen, I don't know what your problem is, basically. Don't say that, but you say, like, is there something going on? Why, why do you want it done this way? Can you tell me why, the reason why? You know, what's your reasoning behind it? And then I ask them also, like, what, what are my expectations? What do you want from me? What? How do you see the vision? Most likely, that person doesn't know their own vision, what they want. And they're passing that non-vision to you, and you're expected to pass it to somebody else. What's probably going on is this. Your manager is telling you to do it this way. And uh, if you do it that way, guess what? They're, they're just pigeonholing you into a problem a lot of times. Oh, I told you this way, you didn't do it. And, you know, also they say like, hey, I told you to do this way, but also I gave you, you know, I'm going to give you some like leeway to do it how you want because you're the manager. Um, so you, you really you could be in a bind either way, right? So think about that, right, from uh, if you're a manager. And, you know, would you want to work for yourself, right? Ask yourself that. Would you want to work for yourself? Your, your team... If your team is, like, made up of people who are seasoned veterans, you know, who've been in the industry 10-plus years or five, even five years, even three years, I'd have to say, actually, most likely they know what they're doing. They don't need you to tell them, like, do it this way or that way. They just want the overall vision, the overall um, uh, path. What am I doing in a general sense? What is my objective? What am, you know, what's my overall goal, really? What am I what am I working here for? Why? Why am I working here? If you can't convey that to them and you just micromanage, you're, you're going to be in for a problem. And because they're going to talk behind your back. And they're not going to respect you 100%. They'll just do what you need them to do, but they're not going to respect you as a manager, you know? No, no way. Not going to happen. So, um, yeah, just think like, think like a person think like the person you're leading, you know, and flip it upside down. You, you know, they don't work for you. Once you understand that, you're fine, right? They do not work for you. You work for them. You're a leader. They, uh, you work for them. That's how it works. They don't work for you. Get that through your mind. Which leads me to a next point. Um, if you're in, if you're looking for a J-O-B job, and you're just a regular worker bee, or even leader, or a manager who wants to be a leader, basically. You know, um, <laughs> you walk into a company, and the first thing they say is, like, we don't do work from home. You know, you really want to qualify that. Like, what? why? Why don't they want to work from home? It, is there no reason why? Really, I mean, I can understand some companies, like a gas station, you don't want to guess. You can't do work from home if you're a gas station. You have to be there, right? But if it's something like that, you know a process can be done, work from home. You know, ask yourself like, why? What's the reason why? Um, you know, even if it's more money, why do you want to work there? And if you're trying to look for a position, you have to stay, you know, in um, butt in seat basically. Uh, I'll tell you what. Actually, I had a call the other day. It was about a, it was a bank, right? 
and they wanted um, they wanted somebody uh, it's like a engineer system engineer something like that anyway so they had like uh, it's a bank right and they had like um, so their backups were Microsoft like they used Microsoft as like their I'm sorry not Microsoft but it was Veeam as their backup which is a good product but um, their their storage they use Microsoft like it basically you took like an your Windows server, right? And you made it a storage device, like a NAS or a SAN. Um, you know, warning, that's warning right there, right? Uh, if any, everybody else is using, like, you know, storage, that's enterprise-level storage, right? And they're not, uh, and they don't want, they're not working from home, those are kind of, you know, like, signs, like, I don't think I want to work here. Uh, because they're probably not listening to, you know, they're probably not going to conferences. They're probably not like listening to the rest of the world. You know, hey, this is how our company is ran elsewhere, other companies. Uh, this is what works for us, and this is what works for our other large organization, like you know the EMCs and the um, quantum devices, right? Basically, um, th- those storage devices, right? Essentially. You know, if you're, whatever your industry is, say like you're, um, I'll just say IT, right? So if you're, if you're a, um, oh gosh, uh, oh yeah, that's another thing. Sorry, they were using Hyper-V, right, for Windows. And I know Hyper-V is good and everything, but it's not VMware. So by, by, by um, reading the job description, you really understand what you're getting into. Like, I don't want to go into that nonsense. They don't even think that VMware is a good product. They're not using VMware. They're using Hyper-V. You know, if you're enterprise, you know, because you have to patch that one server, uh, it's Hyper-V, that's a Windows server, right? Then there's no, there was no discussion about Docker, which is a container. I could understand if you use Hyper-V and you have Docker. I get that. Uh, but, you know, why are you virtual? I mean, it's such a... It's not a scalable product, you know? Um, yeah, so that, anyway, um, what was my point? Okay, I, I know what my point was this. So here we go, watch this. If you're if you're in an IT shop, right, and you have um, lots and lots and lots of, of documents, you know, that you have to, uh, you know, uh, get to every day, right? And your company has only like a, a file share, right? Um, maybe maybe they're a young company, they don't know, right? But, you know, um, and if you, you know, go up to them and, and, and you say, hey, let's use SharePoint or let's use something that we can, um, you know, when there's an Excel spreadsheet that we're updating, right? Put it in SharePoint. If they're not, if you're, if they're not, um, if the person in charge or making a decision is not like, oh, I don't want to do that. I don't like SharePoint. Okay, well, you know, maybe you shouldn't work there. Or if, if there's somehow, there's some way when you're doing an interview where you could ask them, like, do you use SharePoint? Um, or do you use some sort of, like, management? Um, sorry, a um, uh, some way to control, like, uh, um, provide a document control, meaning... You know, check in a document, check out a document. Something where if you have PDFs or Word documents or Excel spreadsheets, let's say, or PowerPoint that you're editing, and they're not using some sort of like system to where um, you know when it's last updated. They just use a file share, and you're like, uh, you know, that that's a warning sign for that company, by the way, and and that's your chance really to ask them in the interview, you know. Hey, are you guys going to move to SharePoint? You know, or use some sort of like um, management um, of you know your your files or whatever. And if they say no, we don't like SharePoint or whatever, or you know, really you have to just play it out by ear. But if you get the feeling like they're not willing to like listen or willing to hear new ideas, then it's probably not a good idea to work there uh, because if they're they're not willing to listen to new ideas now when you're not even working there then what's it going to be like when you're working there full-time, right? It'd be like, oh, okay, 
Oh, only the ideas come from the management. Okay, they're not a leader because the leader will say like, "Hey, how do you how do you think we can we can make things better here? What can I do as a as a leader to make your job easier? You know what what processes? What simple things can we do to where we knock all this stuff that we don't have to do like tedious work? Guess what? I want to save time. I don't want to work. I want to do less work, right? And you want that from your leader to say. How can I how can I give you more time so you can do more creative things? Because I don't want you to work as hard. I want you to work easy. Work easy. I want it to be easy. I want to automate a lot of the things, right? Um, basically. Yeah, so if you're going to, like I said, if you're going for an interview and you kind of get that feeling like, eh, they're old fuddy-duddies, you know, you probably don't want to work there. You know, if you need a job and you just, like I've said, if you're a McDonald's, and you're just looking for a job, dude. Then go for it, man. You know that's the job. Uh, that's the job for you, right? But if you're, you know, just um, if you're IT already and you know the ropes, basically, it's it's just gonna save you some time and headache. You're like, oh, I don't want to have to, you know, deal with these people again because they're not, you know, uh, moving the right direction. Um, cause really that's a lot part of it to be told about the position you work at. Um, yes, you're there to make money for the company. Uh, yes, you're there just to work right for them, but you also want to like, feel like you're, you're part of the company or part of the solution. Um, you're, you're contributing, right? And if, if they, if they stagnate growth and they stagnant like creativity, oh, that's just going to get really, really old, really quick. Uh, so yeah. That's my, um, so that's this uh, podcast. Hope you uh, like it and thanks for listening.